What's up guys, V here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install the brand new Unifan SL120 V2. That being said, let's get right into it. All right, so once you know exactly where you're installing these fans in your case and how many you need, I need three on the bottom and three on the top. So what you need to do, take two fans at a time and they sort of clip into each other. This will go in there and that one will go in here and they just slide. So once you got them in like that, you just slide them and those two are connected to each other. Now, in my case, I need three, so I'm gonna grab another one and do the same exact thing. There we go. Now, let's assume you only needed two, or in my case, I need three, but these little things need to come off. You basically just twist them off uh, clockwise and those come off just for a cleaner look. Now, another really important thing about installing fans is deciding intake, exhaust, etc. So on the bottom of this case, I'm gonna have intake, which means the front of the fan. This is the back. So the front of the fan is gonna be facing downwards like that. So the way we do this, grab one of the fan connectors. All you need is one. And on this side of the fan, you're gonna take it and there's only one way you can really plug it in. You just have to line it up. So this little L piece right here covers these gold pins. So once you get it in, push it all the way in and then you flatten it towards the way that you want it to go. In my case, the cable is gonna go to the back just like that. So that's how mine are gonna go in. In your case, if you don't have a removable tray, just set them, uh, basically flip the case over or whatever. Or if you're doing them on top, then just uh, pull them up and you're gonna put the screws in. But in my case, I need to use this tray. So I'm gonna flip it over and put each screw in. Just go ahead and thread them all in. I like to thread the far corners first, just so everything sits flush. And then I do the center ones. Now they're all screwed in, everything looks good. I'm gonna feed this wire to the back and now you would be done. So again, if you wanna daisy chain them from these to these, it's the same process. You put this in here and then you would connect this to the other ones and then this connector that we plugged in the back here would be plugged either on the top or the bottom here and then it would go there. So that's how you would use these if you want to do that. That's that. Now for this portion, we're gonna go ahead and install the actual controller. So you have this cable here. It's a USB 2.0 cable. It goes on your USB 2.0 header and I'll show you that. It says USB on this side and then it's a micro USB on this side. This plugs into the bottom here with the USB, uh, the micro USB. So it plugs in just like that. First thing we're gonna go ahead and do is plug in our USB 2.0 port into our motherboard. So from the back, now you wanna feed this to the front of your case where your motherboard is. Most of the time, the USB ports will be at the bottom. You can also check your motherboard manual. So there you can see one port is already plugged in with uh, my NZXT hub, and that's where we're gonna plug this new one in. So that's what the plug looks like. One pin is missing, so you can't really plug it in wrong. Match it up with these pins in here, and done. That's plugged in. So that's how you do that. Now, if you have a million devices like I do that need USB 2.0, and I only have two, I used a NZXT hub, which splits it into four, uh, four individual ones. So you could, in theory, plug it into there. Now, we got the USB 2.0 port plugged into our motherboard. The next step is to plug in our SATA cables, and I'll show you this up close as well. Basically, here's your power supply and the SATA cables will come from here somewhere, one of these cables. So if you follow it down, you can see right here, and that's what it looks like. It has an L shape, but you match them up just like this, and then you would clip them in just like that. So now both of those are plugged in. You would want to mount this somewhere in your case um, and tuck away the cables. I'm not gonna do that just because to make this easier. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to plugging in all of the connectors into your hub. 
All right, so I went ahead and installed the top fans and the bottom fans like I showed you, and here's the controller. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug them in. This is probably the most simple part. Uh, you take the one, let's say you want the top ones to be on number one. These are numbered one, two, three, four. So you just plug it into whichever one you think you want. It doesn't really matter. Since these are on top, I'm just gonna plug them into number two. And then those bottom ones, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug into number one. So just like that. And then this you tuck away somewhere. In the case that you bought one three pack and then four individual ones, you could take this, leave it off and use one of your unused ones and just plug it in here. So it does work that way. You can do it and it's no problem. All right, so that was a little tip in case you bought the single packs and aren't sure if the three pack and the single packs are the same or if they're compatible with each other. They are totally compatible. You can use the extra cables that came with your three pack and uh, connect the single pack. So what I would personally recommend, which is what Leanne Lee sent me, they sent me a three pack and then a bunch of single packs. And then I just used the three pack extra cables to connect all of my single packs. So uh, that's what I would recommend to do just to save some money because you don't need a bunch of three packs and then have a bunch of extra controllers and stuff. If you like this type of content, feel free to give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. It's always free. And yeah, with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Now, if you bought the single packs, I'm gonna show you that next. If you bought multiple single packs, you can still connect each fan to each other and connect them just like this, but it doesn't come with a controller. It comes with a whole different cable. So this cable, it plugs in the same exact way into the fan. So just like that. And then if you have other fans, you still only need the one cable, but as you can see, it splits into two cables. This one is for your fan PWM, which you would plug into a fan header on your motherboard. And then this one, is a Lian Li proprietary connector that can actually be plugged into that controller in the sync one or sync two. However, they do come with this little extension cable that plugs into here. And then this is a three pin ARGB five volt. So you would find a three pin on your motherboard and plug it in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and install this and show you exactly what I mean. So on my motherboard, there is the ARGB. As you can see, it has two skips one and then a third plug. This one here is also RGB. You cannot plug it in there. If you do, you will fry the fan. Here's how the connector looks. If your motherboard does not have this, Basically, you can't plug this in. You can plug it still into the controller, but there's only one way to plug this in. You line up the three holes and it slides in just like that. And then you would tuck this away, etc. So with the fan header, you find a fan header on your motherboard. I have three right here on my motherboard. They're called sys fan one, two, three, four, etc. And you see this little rail on here. It just lines up with this rail on there. And then basically, you line them up just like this and you can see right there how the rail is going to slide on and boom that is installed and after you tuck this away this fan would be controlled by your motherboard software so your motherboard bios controls the fan speed based on you know cpu temps and you can go change that etc and then for your rgb you have to install your motherboard software so in my case this is a gigabyte motherboard i would use rgb fusion 2.0 now with all that being said that's pretty much all i have for you in this video i appreciate you guys watching hopefully this video was helpful if it was please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to drop a comment i'll see you in the next one peace